Howdy my pretties and welcome to another episode of For the Vanity. Today's episode we're going to be talking about protein. So what is protein? Protein is the building block of every cell in your body. Protein is a macronutrient, meaning that you need a large amount of it as opposed to a lot of vitamins and minerals which are considered micronutrients. So what does protein do for you? Protein builds muscles, it aids in the neurological functions, it bounces hormones, it aids in digestion, it regulates mood. Just think about all those Snickers commercials. It prevents unwanted weight gain. It also prevents unwanted weight loss. And because I always have to bring this back to the beauty aspect, it is absolutely paramount in the growth of hair and the growth of nails. Nails and hair, the primary building block of all of them are protein, mostly keratin, which is a type of protein. And if you are not getting enough, you can expect to have a lot of weakness in the hair and a lot of weakness in your nails. If you're not getting enough protein, your body has choices to make. Repair muscle, grow hair and nails. Build bone, grow hair and nails. Produce hormones, grow hair and nails. Are you seeing where you might be running into a few problems when it comes to the nails and hair department? In my opinion, most of the people who are getting the right amount of protein are professional athletes. Everybody else is pretty much doing a crappy job. Vegetarians and vegans, in my experience, do a piss poor job of getting the right amount of protein in the diet and I often see it in the hair. There's the thinness and there's a brittleness and the hair is just disappearing from the scalp. Um, and those who do get a good amount of protein in their diet, I, l I like to advise them to make sure, you know, they're checking and making sure they get their balance right to make sure they're getting all those amino acids that come in animal protein and find, you know, other sources. So animal protein versus plant proteins. In my opinion, it's important to get as much of your protein as possible from plant sources. I'm not a vegetarian. I do not have the discipline nor the desire to do that correctly, but I do try to get the bulk of my protein from plant sources. The additional minerals and nutrients that phytonutrients that come from the plants, I think it just does my body wonders. And in my opinion, I don't think that the plant proteins work through the kidneys and the liver as hard as the animal proteins do. So even though, you know, we're talking about protein today, I don't really advocate for those like super high protein diets like Atkins or, you know, some people I know when they do paleo, it's like, you know, all bacon fat and like meat and like no veg. I don't advocate for anything like that. I do believe in a more balanced approach when it comes to your protein intake. So what does protein do for you? Well, it can curb your sugar cravings. So those of you who are finding that, you know, you're always quit craving sweets and everything like that, try adding more protein into your diet. Um, and it can help you to feel full longer. So, you know, you always got that gremlin in the belly talk about it's time to eat, it's time to eat. More protein, less hunger. Um, it stabilizes your blood sugar and it gives consistent energy and it speeds up your metabolism. So for those who are trying to drop some weight, um, if your thyroid's not functioning that great and everything and you're trying to drop some weight, if you're holding on to fat a little bit too long, bump up your protein. So what are the signs that you might be protein deficient? So in the last video, we talked about iron and I recommended that you go to the doctor to have your iron checked out. So you have all the symptoms that we talked about in the last video. You got fatigue, you know, your skin is dry, you're getting a little bit brittle in the hair and everything. And you go to the doctor and the doctor says, you know what? Your iron's a okay. Your iron is just fine. It could be a protein. So symptoms that you are protein deficient you're having trouble losing weight. Or for some men, you're having trouble gaining weight. Um, your immune system is just shot. Every cold, every flu, every bug that passes by during cold season you're, is on you, you catch it. Um, you are slow to heal. You get a cut, it doesn't heal fast. You get a bruise, it's like there forever. Low energy, fatigue, poor concentration and trouble learning, ADHD massive. 
pick ups kids who have um are diagnosed with adhd or any other you know brain differential they need more protein so when i'm finding i'm getting a little bit more adhd than usual i bump up my i bump up my protein and lo and behold brain starts working again um it helps if you're low in, um if your protein is not on point you can be moody you can have mood swings um you have muscle pains and joint pains just overall body pains things aren't repairing the way they need to and everything just hurts so how do we get all this great protein so things that foods that have protein fish meat whether it's chicken um, seafood red meat some kind of animal for those who you know don't mind putting shrine, swine in the shrine pork um, nuts seeds whole grains eggs some veggies have a good bit of protein, quinoa. On that list, processed meats, I don't count that as protein. Um, it's just a lot of salt and just, you know, way to get some pancreatic cancer. So don't add that to your list of proteins. Animal proteins are complete proteins containing all the amino acids that the body needs. If you are eating a predominantly or all plant-based diet, make sure that you are checking to see what amino acids you might be missing if you're not getting meat and find another way to get them in whether it's through supplements or other types of foods so if you have been lax when it comes to eating initially you might find like ingesting all this protein heart if you can't eat that much protein a day consider supplementing with a protein powder preferably something that is vegan and soy free that's what i recommend to my clients is like you know go ahead and get a protein powder do one or two shakes in a day try and get something that is vegan so it doesn't work your liver or your kidneys as hard and try and get something soy free because if you're a man you don't want boobs and if you're a woman you don't want your hormones just thrown out just thrown all over the place if you are getting accustomed to eating again because you have become food phobic from not eating, consider setting a timer so that every two and a half to three hours, the timer goes off and reminds you, hey, it's time to eat. Have something with a little bit of protein in it, so a fat, a fiber, so you get a little bit of balance and everything. You find yourself functioning better through the days. So how much protein should you really be eating? So the easiest way for you to figure out what your protein needs are is to go online and find a protein calculator. Make sure it's not one that's geared towards bodybuilders because the amount of protein they take in is ridiculous. And I don't know who is like, if you're not sitting down and eating all damn day, I don't know who's going to be able to eat that much protein. So just make sure it's on the bodybuilding web website that you find your protein calculator on. Women should be getting anywhere between 0.32 to 0.82 grams of protein per pound of their body weight. So why so broad a range? Well, it depends on lifestyle. If you sit all day, if you are a couch potato, if you are very sedentary, you're not going to need as much protein as your active cisterns. So 0.36 grams of protein per pound of your body weight would be the ideal amount of protein. If you are somebody who is very active, maybe you're lifting weights, maybe you're, um, you know, you're going to the gym on a regular basis, you are a very active person, you walk or stand a lot in your job, now you're leaning more towards the 8.2 grams of protein per body weight, per pound of body weight. So figure, you know, try and figure out where you are in the scale of, you know, sedentary to really active and, you know, move in between that scale to figure out how much you should be eating in a day. One of the easier ways to ensure that you get your daily allotment of protein is to have small meals throughout the day. Not the three big squares or like nothing for, you know, breakfast and, you know, something for lunch and then dinners where you have all your protein. So keep in mind, I'm talking about protein, but that doesn't mean that I'm advocating for one of those high protein diets. If you love bread, you love pasta and you want to keep eating that, Go ahead, keep doing that. Just, you know, add a little bit more protein so you won't be filling yourself up with carbs. 
So, we're nearing the end of this video and I'm gonna have to issue a warning because people by nature just like to overdo everything. Do not increase your protein without your doctor's supervision if you already have kidney or liver disease. You are already having issues with processing, fats, proteins, whatever the case may be, and upping your protein without your doctor's supervision can be dangerous. So once again, if you already have a kidney or liver issue, talk to your doctor before you start upping your protein. So all this boils down to um, protein is essential for making you pretty. Doing all those squats to round out your booty, you need protein. Getting nice little talons without having to get acrylics done, eat protein. Long, strong, healthy, shiny hair, 100% you need protein. Well, I think that's all I'm going to say about protein today. If you like this video or you found the information useful, please like and subscribe on YouTube and follow For The Vanity on Facebook, Instagram, and all the other social media sites. And thank you for watching. See you soon.